Welcome everybody. Happy Monday, August 29th. Sorry, Kat's just telling me that the that the um, audio is kind of spotty, so we probably want to talk up a bit. Spotty audio. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Thank you. I'm Elizabeth Potter. Um, I hope that some of you have had an opportunity to shoot photos, or maybe just write up your info flow. Thank you. Uh, I know Mary Thomas steps down to see mom and talked directly with him what was going to be for finding Also, it seems like most people share some of the concerns that I so I think it's valuable for a record of the which I heard us. In the past, there was a select board member that had the responsibility of overseeing the highway department. Is that still something that the town does? So that instead of going through the whole select board like this, there was somebody that was a So I was the highway department. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I'm here because myself and many others feel it is reasonable to expect to have the beauty of our rich town taken into consideration when maintenance is being done. Considering the tree work that was done in the spring on Northbrook Road, um, I'm feeling like that there wasn't a public posted before cutting the trimming. Is that correct? Okay. Um, many of the old and dead trees along Northbrook Road between Yankees and Boyden's is a big problem. Not all the trees that were trimmed were a safety hazard. Massachusetts Federal Law Chapter 87, governing public shade trees, required a public hearing. Stating no person, including the tree warden, may cut, trim, or remove any tree greater than one and a half inches in diameter without a public hearing. Um, I don't know if there was any sort of consultation with an arborist or any training um, for the tree work. <laughs> Many of the younger trees that were trimmed have since died, some half dead ones, and some trees that have been dead for years still remain. And the younger, healthier trees have been cut very far off, and they we call them the long cut trees. Um, and before I go any further, what was the plan to finish cutting and removing all the debris? Well, first off, let me the safety on with that. Um, and what we did there, that's how we dealt with things. So, have you done the public hearings for the other trees that have been cut since the ones on Long Brook Road? I don't know. I haven't seen it. No, no. Like this year, I don't know where it's going. Almost all the trees are in Long Brook Road. Okay. I don't know. I think it's going to be more than one. Okay. And what I apologize for I have been informed and spoken to of how we were doing things in the Understand from living on our road how important it would have been to have a public meeting. And so, you know, now, now it, we, we know that we've learned that. And so that's good. Um, it, it's really important, I think, for the beauty of our town as well, because uh, what has happened is not really very effective. Um, so, what is the plan to remove, finish cutting and remove all the debris? So, we'll all be cleaned up before. 
parameters from the report, but we have a I understand that, and um, I want to be sensitive to that, but I don't know why the job was left before I did that was completed. I don't know why why you went to another job. Okay, well, I see a lot of people like Blue Estate Company, and they come and they have to clear all their trees each time before they leave any place that they're working on. They're completely finished before moving on to another project. And I'm wondering if this is a good place to maybe establish a good time and place because of what has happened and the way that our town, or that's our main, I want to live on that road, but take a lot of pride in where they live. And the beauty of the road is one of the attractions. Well, it meant to be. Right. But when I put it in a whole that includes other projects that we have that take that time. But in this one, what would stop that to go and do that kind of stuff? I mean, we have to work with our higher contractors in their time. Do you understand it being an issue that just happened in April and the way that the road works? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so But I have to wrap one because right. a lot of things when you check when you read the there be projects lined up to use it when we didn't Yeah, I understand that there's a cost. I also understand that we pay probably the same as taxes are probably the same as most of the other hill towns in our area. We probably have the same just about the same mileage of roads. And I haven't seen a road that looks like ours. From April to September. So I think that there would be some way right one, two few projects, right one, two three two projects. But um, I don't think maybe maybe it's gonna have to be more than one a year. I don't know. But um it seems to me the majority of it is could be moved and as well. It will be 
Um, last meeting, I heard hopefully fall. And I think that we should have a better plan than that as a time and, and the way that it's left instead of hopefully. I just don't. Um, it's because of what happened. Okay. Um, the mowing was another issue that Chris has, has brought up. Um, Wherever Bush Road is always mowed, and there's other roads in town. So let me clear something up on that. Supposing we don't start mowing in the these cars, this year we started in July. So we have 64 miles of road, three miles of Always broke down, it's been broke down for two weeks. So we're falling behind. But we started a month early. Never got mold. The fire section might have got mold in the beginning, early on in our mowings, but we've never started in um, July before. So it won't be, we cannot expect to have it mold. It'll be mold this fall. It will be. You know, okay. Um, the mowing is something, I mean, it's like you go mow somewhere and then you get the residents complaining that you're mowing their um, flowering plants down and you, you try to work around things, but it gets very difficult. Mm -hmm. I can imagine it's a very challenging job, for sure. Um, I was driving up from Barbara's Ferry and other than a few piles that need to be checked, the road looks very nice. It's a very lovely drive, and it makes you feel proud to be in Conway. Um, currently, the growth that's on our road from not being mowed, it pushes cars, bikers, and walkers out into the middle, creating a really dangerous situation. And so people drive saying that we should mow two or three times a year. I don't know what it's reasonable. Mowing, roadside mowing, the whole reason how it's been roadside mowing. It's to control the growth of trees, mm -hmm. not to have lawn next to the road. Right. So, and unfortunately, some of the issues that we have now is the um, invasive species mm -hmm. that grow, like Japanese knotweed, which you can't, you'd have to mow it weekly to control it. And that can't happen. Okay, I'm not putting in, I'm not making any determination of when or how often it should be mowed. What I'm saying, I mean, we have sumacs growing up and other kinds of things, and that has happened because of not the mowing. So I'm glad that there will be mowing. No, no, um, actually, our mowing has been the best in the last five years of probably most any place around. Mm -hmm. How we mow. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it, we're not allowing things to grow up because of our lack of mowing. Okay. Well, I, I, I I'm do just making it clear that we do we take great pride in when we clear an area of trees and then maintain it so that it doesn't come back. That's you're, you're 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 saying that things are growing up because we're not mowing. That's not true. There's some pretty big sumac if you want to go up and take a look at what's growing up there right now. Um, let me just go on because I know that you guys have a time limit concerning the condition of the road surfaces. Um, does the town still use a grader to do the dirt roads? When what, when are they graded? This year they were all graded in the spring with the exception of maybe three roads. Was ours and Pol and Poland Road, main yes. Poland Road? Okay, because there is a lot of extreme amounts of gravel with rather large stones, making it horrible to drive on and very dangerous for biking. Well, we just did some work over on Rowan Road, <laughs> below South Park Road, towards Waitley Road. And yes, it, it, a lot of that, the reason that is so choppy right now is because it's been so dry that when we put the gravel down, you didn't have enough moisture. So, so we yeah. can, you, if there's any way to have the dirt road be graded as it always has been for many, many years without dumping a, a lot of excessive gravel and stone on it. The whole um, point of that was to build the road back up. Right, and it left a, it left a um, ditch on the shoulders 
that's mm -hmm. up to mm -hmm. two and a half. That duty is always been. Well, it should be. So we yes, it needs to be there so that when it's grading time, we don't lose the road. Okay, well, maybe grading. Do you plan on grading that soon? Yeah. Or this fall? This fall? Mm -hmm. um, the gravel, like, like I said, so it, the, the grading is really important. Uh, the pavement is in extremely poor condition. Some of that has been broken up naturally over the years. And one of the worst potholes was created when a dead tree fell on the road. And the highway department scooped up a large amount of the pavement along with the dead tree in removing that. Is there any way that that can, even if it was patched? It will be patched when yeah. we do patch it. It could be another one. Do you have any plan for um, resurfacing the road? Lauren Brook is hopefully, it's, it's hard to tell right now, but it, it was on the plan for next year. For next year. Now, the, time, the road from 116 to your highway garage looks beautiful. Um, what is the way that you determined? That came out of a different farm. That um, came out of the highway. Okay. It, it's it's beautiful, but um, we're ours is pretty bad. And patching might might work. So um, our once beautiful road has been left in a horrible mess since spring. Cleaning this mess up should be a priority. The town has two payloaders. What would it take? One day, maybe two. Mow, chop, and um, you know my point in coming today is I've lived on that road for many many years and watched. The old guy, Charlie uh, Basie, do the grading. The roads were in excellent condition. We have the same number of roads, same number of hours in a day, and more equipment than, we, than the town has ever owned on their highway crew. And our road is just a shambles. It's a horrible thing to have people have to drop, live on that road right now. And um, I see a lot of thought put into the way but the meetings and the and the hearings will be good, but I also think that we might want to do some training because there's dead trees down on Waitley Road. Is there a plan for those? The ones that were stripped with they, they just go all the way up like the just sticks. The steps. That reason them are left like that is because of the city of Northampton. Okay, what about if I our road? You mean the way the, the, the city of Northampton did that all the way up? No, we did that, but we left them because that's what the city of Northampton wanted. Okay. Um, you do you know a plan for them? I have no idea. Their property. Okay. And um, I did when I when I shared with a friend that I was coming today. Um, I know that some of you have spoken something. And she also asked after the trees were trimmed to be put on the select board agenda. And um, she said that she is, did not get a response. I again asked for a timetable for when they would be removing the dead wood, and she hasn't heard anything. So we can agree on that. What is fall, November? I mean, how about early fall? Yes, the, the plan right now is. When we get done with the pavement, so by should be by the end of September, they should all be everything should be taken care of. What's left? Mow, chip, pick up. I don't know about trim. the mowing. Well, we've got a problem because on both sides, we of don't the road, normally get done mowing until November. Okay, but both sides of the road have trees strewn falling on them. I mean, what do you mean? Well, where that hole was in the road over by Judy Boyden's, there's three huge chunks of trees for some reason in there. It's quite a hazard. And some of the trees that are caught with leaves on them are on like the end of Judy's uh, stone wall and, and stuff. And then some well, of them- we had a tree come down that was on from her property. She did? Yes. That's not how we swung. So, at the at the down by the farmhouse. This is behind. This is where you were cut. And so um, you know, there's a lot of a lot, a lot of debris. And I think that we will be cleaning everything up in the town right. Okay. All right. Um, what did we do? I have, like I said, I have this letter from Susan. She asked for a timeline. 
So it comes when we talked to her at a select board meeting, it was explained to her when they would be cleaned up by it was by fall. Okay. So, so I don't know what her question is now. What what she's not understanding. And I talked to her outside of the meeting about this as well. Okay. So I'm confused why this I know she was, I know she was glad to hear we're starting safe okay. hearings. I think it was just that we have the people haven't heard everything and people are concerned that it's that it's gone on for so long now. Um so maybe I misunderstood her. But um fall and um I really do appreciate you people taking a ride up because I did, I did. No, I appreciate it. Lot, um, yeah, I, I, I think that there. it's a beautiful it has been in the past a beautiful road. And I think that, that even though it might cost a little extra money, we might have to think about doing things in maybe three sections at a time. Uh, you know, upper Baptist Road. They you you're doing work up there. That has to be checked. I know it has to be checked. I don't know where else does, but maybe getting a chipper three times a year instead of leaving it like this from April to well, November. Some of the problem is the manpower. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I can't help you with how to, to get work done and schedule it. All I know is that this seems like a huge issue with a lot of different kinds of reasons, and I would like to avoid it happening again. And I would like to also make sure that no trees are cut down or trimmed unless it's a safety hazard until there's a public hearing. I, 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 if the public hearing is for the cutting of the trees, not the trimming, so there's the removal of the trees, not for any. No person, including the tree warden, may cut, trim, or remove any tree greater than one and a half inches in diameter. Yeah. Um, Right, the town council had said to us that maintaining the trees, okay, the this, trimming in that was not part of this, that it was the removal that we had to have a hearing for. Okay, so what do we do about the trees that obviously have been compromised because are, are really are not an arborist, but it doesn't seem like anybody that's been cutting the trees is an arborist either, and maybe getting some knowledge on what, how we can of the trees that are in the town remain looking like beautiful trees. I mean, these trees have been growing for a long time and they're cut all the way up to the top. And I don't know that it was necessary. The, the, uh, our, our tree warden is not a certified arborist, but he is a tree guy. Very long. And, um, I don't know. Are most tree wardens certified arborists? Uh, the, the position is open if you'd like it. No, I don't know. I'm <laughs> asking. I'm telling you, there's things in town that look beautiful. The common looks beautiful. There's things, but you are really sensitive about how you cut these beautiful some of the trees. Is, Some of the things that people want to keep the trees is a very expensive thing for the highway or for the town. What do you need, Hunt? I appreciate um, Trimming the trees and letting the sun in is one of the most beneficial things for the road that anybody can do. For money's that the town has to spend for maintaining the road. A covered road is the worst thing that you can do for your pavement or your dirt because it never lets the dry out. And I don't know, all you do is you see what the state has been doing with their roads because they're trying to make things, the money last longer. That is understandable. But these trees have already been established and they're, they were beautiful trees. And the way that they've been hacked all the way to the top isn't going to be saving that much of the road. The big trees that were there might, those trees are basically on the north side, the south, the, 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 and it's the, not just the, it's not just the sunlight either. It's the branches hanging over with the dripping sap. And okay. The trees that have been cut 
the ones that are furthest from the road that were not a hazard and you know they're probably about this big and they've been stripped all the way to the top we don't we're not going to have a town with no trees anywhere near the road those were there maybe not plant them near the road but we should be more respectful of the trees that have been growing there and maybe it's a disadvantage in some way that that's where they grew and they weren't ever cut down or anything and i can understand that it is a problem but they are there they are beautiful trees and i believe that that's why this law to protect our shade trees is in place i believe that well, that's one of the yes everything that's so, happened up until now we can't put that right okay but I do think that we should have some consultation before we start cutting anything else. Yes, and, I mean, we have. Um, have, have find, find somebody with some expertise, and I don't know who that is, but um, maybe you two. I don't know. The, the, the job of tree board has changed in this town because it went from driving around, looking at trees and talking to the highway department to you to conducting shade tree commission hearings and sending out certified notices two weeks in a row in the paper of record and da da da, da. And all of a sudden, um, it became a different job. And if you look at the town budget, we pay a stipend of, I think, $300. Mm -hmm. And that's, so now that stipend is not adequate. Right. The job is not as fun as it was. And um, it's almost unfair to the current tree board and to now just dragoon him through the new world that we are creating. I totally understand that. But had we had the public hearing, <laughs> I probably, we probably wouldn't have lived in this awful, awful mess. It's, since there's April. probably truth to that. And just, yes. I'd just like to say that that is not our highway boss's fault, that that is the way we were doing things since that law was passed. And that, that mistake and that mistake had been made generations and it had been remade again by multiple generations. I am here to express my concerns and I'm also here to learn <laughs> what has happened and how to avoid this and what we can expect as far as cleaning that up um, and not having this happen again. There is wood everywhere. Like I say, both sides of the roads. I mean, it's just a tangled mess. And the, the Shade Tree Commission hearings will be done by the select board prior to select board meetings in the near future. I think it's great. And I also appreciate being put on the agenda. And I think that um, there's a lot of people that are sharing my concerns. So we can follow up if there's, you know, if something yes. comes up. And your road does not lack for people that are vocal about their concerns about the aesthetics of the road. And that's a good thing. Okay. See, and we didn't know that until I, well, except for that one letter. Good. Good. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. And uh, thank you for putting me on. And I look forward to a beautiful road again um, in the very near future. And let's try to avoid this from happening. Thank you. Right, so Ron, the last thing to review is the chapter 90 request for work and reimbursement. You're the ones that you signed already. Yes. So I have three reimbursement projects that we did. Yeah. First one was South Church Air Road, which was in full depth reclamation and hot mix. Yeah. And that that road happened. was terrible. Now it's really nice. Sure. One is yeah, mm -hmm. the speed complaints have already started. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, now on the dollar amount, it was figured for $158,544. It ended up costing $204,442.14 for further the asphalt um, adjustment and the diesel fuel adjustment. All these projects are way more expensive than this. Yeah. The second project was Old Cricket Hill Road. Now we, we did the same thing in full depth of the main shape of this too. And um, two and a half inch base funded work. That was went from 61 to 920 to. 
And that actually, I think, made the experience of driving the transfer station safer. No? no. I think you're going to have some problems. Because people are going a lot faster now. That happens every time we do a road. Yeah, every but time it rains, that, that so building's good. getting deeper. And yeah, deeper. We're, we're going to address that. There is a piece near the Morgan's driveway in the middle where there's it's about this big and about this deep. It's already lifted. Just so you know, because if it, it, I'd hate to see it get. Yeah. The third one was Matthew's road where we pull a 10% the chip field. And that one's figured at 37,800. And we ended up costing the uh, ministry $42,012. One of them numbers is. That's it for the reimbursement. Right. Next one is for a project in square. Or shoveling fog fields um, where we left off with the chip field to the other side of our road. And we're doing an inch and a half overlay. Should possibly do that. Not that's right. Okay. 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 Yes, we have a total on that is 221,045. Depending on what the diesel fuel and asphalt pricing do, it could be more or could be less, but I guess it's going to be more. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. That's it for me. All right. So now, can I ask a question? Yeah, I guess that on here. Yeah. Uh, someone had asked me. Uh, a citizen had asked about putting a yield sign at the four way intersection before you go up the road to the transfer station. On the opposite side of the stop sign? I don't I, I, I don't think it personally matters on which side. There's no stop sign or anything there. Well, there's a stop sign coming off, coming back down. Is there? Yes, there is, but there's not one going across. Right, there's not one going across. It confuses people. Yes. I don't know if that would. Well, We've had this discussion before. Okay, and the annual discussion almost. And we've never had any issues there. Right. And on it's country driving. There's so never been an accident. You know, last time we had BS people here. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think that's the answer then. <laughs> I mean, uh, signs typically don't work anyways. Right. Um, they create a lot of other things, right? You know, with maintenance and stuff like that. Right. Okay. But, um, yes, we discussed. We discussed not actually that long ago. Okay. I will let them know. Thank you. Jan, Jan or Bob, was there anything you wanted to add to any of this before we go into the trash of Palooza portion of this evening's program? No. Nope. All right. Right. Can so, you guys hear us any better? Yes, the sound improved greatly. Great, thanks. Good. 
All right, so we're going to skip down again to um, agenda for Jan Amin of the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District to update the select board on the transfer station and a general overall discussion of our transfer station and how we can make it better for everybody concerned. Well, thank you um, to be here. It's nice to get out and about these days. Um, I know I sent very neat a copy of uh, the document I put together, but I also have hard copies. Yes. Same yep. thing. Yep. Okay. Um, so, I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't come to meetings to tell towns what to do. My, my um, kind of position where I come from is to offer my expertise and my experience from working with 17 transfer stations in the district. Um, and sharing information and data so that you folks can make decisions to, to do things the same or differently or do things. So um, what I what I did was I uh, kind of categorized things and just wanted to give you an update about trash disposal costs because those changed um, surprisingly uh, at the end of last fiscal year and then talk about uh, some of your tonnage and bulky waste. And so I'll, I'll just kind of go through this without reading it. Um, so the, the first thing I wanted to, to talk about is um, we, so, so let me step back because I'm not sure, I'm not sure how much you know about the solid waste district's role or involvement with the transfer station. Um, the solid waste district has always for probably 30 years um, held the contract to haul materials and transfer stations, towns can choose to use, sign on to that, it's a user fee. Uh, fee for service program so towns can choose to use that service or not. Um, we manage uh, the hauling for trash, open waste, scrap metal, and recyclables. My office also helps towns uh, with the recycling of um, items like tires, electronics, fluorescent light bulbs, propane tanks. Um, and then you folks are one of three sites that host our regional paint and oil uh, collection, which which the district manages. So we own those those two sheds, we provide supplies, we pay for, for the recycling of all those items. Um, so one of the things that, that I do is I manage, I manage all of those contracts. And uh, it, so waste management is a hauler for, for most of the, for the trash and recycling of waste right now. Um, but this past contract, I had selected a um, a five-year disposal contract with Community Kill Power. It's the waste to energy incinerator in Agalon. Um, it was very, very good pricing. I was very excited about it, locking in pricing for five years. Um, and then three years into the contract, they went bank. Or two and a half years into the contract, they went bank. And um, instead of reorganizing, they decided to sell the assets. So that entire facility is no longer, there, is, there are no uh, waste to energy incinerators in Western Mass anymore. The Agawam and the Fitzfield plant had both been converted to transfer stations, to trash transfer stations. Um, so this kind of all happened rapidly and um, a group of us in the region started gathering um, pricing from alternative disposal facilities. And uh, I ended up selecting um, the Publix McNamara transfer station in Springfield. The price we were paying at SEP was $81 a ton. Um, the price that we suddenly got uh, forced to pay was $94. Um, and so, uh, or $95 a ton. So we, um, everybody's budget kind of went askew uh, and towns had to kind of like last minute prep this year's budget based on that new $13 a ton increase. Um, and, and what that did for Conway, I noted add about, would add about $5,000. So your trash disposal costs just for disposal, not hauling, just trash disposal went up about $5,000 overnight. Um, the prices going forward were just at the tip of $100 a ton. Um, and within the next fiscal year, FY24 and FY25, are going to be over $100 a ton. So it's starting to get to be a big number. Um, in FY22, Conway spent about $50,000 on trash hauling. Um, the trash tonnage, so 
So I get all of the reports. We get the bill each month. So I see all of the tonnage reports and I see that because we uh, have to contract for the disposal facility, every month I get the, the tonnage numbers for each town. So we track that uh, monthly. We have to report it. I report it to DEP. It's required report uh, by February 15th. So, so some of these numbers are, are FY fiscal year numbers and some you'll see are calendar year numbers. Um, because DEP requires a calendar year report, and then hope someday they change that because it's very time consuming to convert everything um, to calendar year from fiscal year numbers. That would drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would just drive me insane. It's it's a it's a lot of spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Um, so so in fiscal twenty two, fiscal year twenty two, we ship four hundred thirty tons of trash. It's basically one trash fall a week. And the first thing I noted is, um, so you know, when you divide that by fifty two, it's about eight tons. Which is good, um, and I know that compactor. There have been some issues. Hopefully, they're fixed now. Um, the those units can hold up to. I, for instance, gets in Northfield get fourteen to fifteen tons a load. So there's a potential to get a lot more trash per haul. The issue, um, and I and I think this is the issue. I mean, I have to really look at all of the hauls per week, but. Um, the issue is that you folks are open on the weekend, right? You have Sunday hours, right? Mm -hmm. So, so Leverett has Saturday and Sunday hours. Um, Northfield used to, and what we found, and so with, uh, with the attendance here, typically towns that are open on Saturday and Sunday have to have an empty box by Friday. So even if that trash box isn't necessarily full, like full, then they have to haul it. So I'm guessing you folks are hauling are you hauling Thursdays or Fridays? Yeah. No, you're not. No. So you you're going. We haul on a Monday Wednesday, morning. We go Wednesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday Saturday. Sunday. Awesome. Okay. So you may be able to get another Wednesday in then, because because you're only you're only averaging eight tons, and you can probably get another four tons. I think some of that's got the problems with the dumps is not being maintained. But I got photos of what the dumps look like when they need. The it's compactors just, not yeah, that are jammed back with the way it's wire come in and do a mm -hmm. well, seven hundred and sixty dollar preventative maintenance that's from both compactors. You get it on and see why all this trash is sticking out of the bottom and it's taking its space. It's it's, it's, it's going under the ram. Yeah. Yeah. Which so, is gonna cause it, problems. It, yeah, so that has to be cleaned out, right? Trash will trash will slide under or more more um commonly taken will slide under. And then that paper does have to get cleaned out, otherwise it will. Well, we're going to get a lot of plastics and other stuff in the other dumps, and the blue waste. And Say that again. We're going to in the other dumps, the other compactors. We're going to get a lot of food sliding under there because the, people throw the trash compactors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's but the I guess same, I guess, I, it is I, the guess same setup. I guess my point is it may be worth seeing if you can get one more day out of it. I'm I'm just here to present information, so. That unit should optimally be able to haul, be able to hold that box, should be able to hold 12 to 14 tons of trash. You're shipping it at eight. So that's awesome that you're going Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. You may be able to go Wednesday and save 12 hauls, you know, or 10 hauls a year. So I'm just pre presenting information that could right. potentially save the town money. That sounds like it's worth something more. Could, if we can guarantee that they deliver us as requested, because they don't. Right, because it would have to be every four. Well, you would have to. So you'd have to call it in Wednesday, so it's a 48-hour notice. I got a call them a week in advance, and they'll tell me it'll be the end of the weekend, and nothing. Will not show up till Tuesday? Well, that's another, that's a situation. So you have my cell phone, so you should let me know because they're supposed to haul with them the way the contract is, is they have 48 hours to pick it up. Mm -hmm. So they can be drivers. I tried that this morning. Drivers, but. I, I tried that this morning. I told you, you'd be told to mind my own business and they'll go directly to you to have a problem handled. Okay. So we go on to, to my boss. They're calling me almost every Monday now. Go down and open the transfer station for them. And that's the first time hearing that. Yeah, because I didn't think it was a big deal because I live so close. It's been like four weeks in a row. Now they're calling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now they're Chris well, out of Springfield. Now they're calling Lee 
Frank at, at 5 36 in the morning. Please? Yeah. Yeah, well, I just got an email asking. We're, we've digressed a little bit. So, um, but I just got an email today asking for the new contact person, and I gave him your number. Um, so we should, um, and it's good. Maybe maybe we need to regularly, the three of us or four of us, um, just connect about issues. So you know, you pass them on to Veronique. She can collate things, and then I can figure out what I can take on. Um, but they sh they are supposed to come within 48 hours. They have new drivers. Um, the new drivers are not fully trained, so they're not so great. Um, yeah, it takes them two hours to drop them off. Um, yeah, well, they're learning, you know, they're, they're especially if they have a trailer, it's a little bit tricky. Um, so, you know, just circling, circling back, the possibility is that you could get, you could go Wednesday to Wednesday, call it in Wednesday afternoon. We could also put you on um, a scheduled pickup. So we could say, you have to pull the box every Friday. And then they would just come every Friday. But then it's still just three days of open transfer station. So yeah. Sunday, Wednesday, instead right. of Wednesday. Right. Friday. Yeah. It'd have to alternate Fridays and Tuesdays. Or Fridays yeah, and Mondays. It, it would have to be, you'd be Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, whole. Yep. Then Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, there's yeah. a problem. If you yeah. want yeah. that many pickups. I see. Yeah, right. Because then you're running into, it's the weekend yeah. where you can't. So that's right. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll lay that on the calendar and see. Um, it may right. It may be every other every other one. Um, yeah, look at when you guys are pulling and what your time is. You can get one more day. And so again, the goal is just to see if there's a way to save the, save the town. And if we can, if this is the best, they're doing the best they can. Then they're doing the best they can, right? So the, the ideal is to get more trash in. Um, but if it, if it doesn't work out logistically, then it doesn't work out logistically. Mm -hmm. Sounds like worst case it would work out six times a year instead of twelve times a year, whatever. Possibly, yeah. I'll 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 lay that out. Um, I'll go back. I can go back and look at when the falls. Be careful not to fill because I mean you can't take trash. And, you know. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, that doesn't go over too well. No. Right, and that's what. Right. Yeah. People don't want to do that. Uh, with their full box. That's when they stop at my house with their truck with their car still loaded with trash, screaming because they weren't able to get rid of it. Right, so right. Trash is, people are funny about their trash. So um what I did was I looked at other communities and, and the next piece I'll talk about is you know whether the town wants to consider trying to reduce the amount of trash they're paying for. Um so I, I took four towns that have permit that also have permit numbers. Not every town sells permits, um, but I have had permit numbers for Conway, Deerfield, Leverett, and Orange. And you can see the number of permits range from Conway or Leverett at 653, Conway's 1,050, and then um, Deerfield and Orange are both 1,200 and change. Conway shipped um, 428 tons. Uh, Deerfield shipped 501, Lever 174. So, so Lever is like the star. They have like 45% recycling rate, 42% recycling rate. I don't know how they make so much trash. Um, and Orange uh, with 1,200 permits came in at 475. So this should say pounds per permit user. Um, so you can see Conway, you know, if everybody is bringing in the same, and certainly not, you know, not everybody, you know, Typically, senior citizens make less trash than families, right? If you have three kids or four kids, you're going to be making a lot more trash than, than a single person. Um, so, but if you average it out of all permit users, the average is 832 pounds in Conway, 780 for Deerfield, 532 for Leverett, and 777. So, you know, I've suspected for many years, and I've had this conversation with the Board of Health probably, I don't know, maybe three times in my one to seven years of solid waste district. Um, the idea that as more and more communities around you shift to a pay as you grow system, you folks become an island where people, residents have this perception that it's free, trash is free. And it is free for them each day they go to the transfer station. But we all know it's not free because it, you're paying $50,000 a year just for disposal. It's built into your general fund budget. So what I found in other communities, um, specifically Irving and Rowe, and, and we'll talk a little bit about Irving and Rowe um, in fact. So Irving and Rowe um, are fairly wealthy communities. They've resisted any kind of 
uh, charge for trash for many, many years. And um, we started seeing that they're, just like the data I just presented to you, we started seeing that compared to their neighbors, uh, those towns were generating a lot more trash. They were still a lot more trash per user um, than their neighbors with a page to grow program or, or, or a modified page to grow. So, for example, Roe um, instituted their modified page to grow program. And I'll, I'll talk about what, why it's modified in a second. In July of 2019, they mail every household, there's four stickers on a sheet, they mail every household 52 stickers. Um, so everybody gets a free bag of trash. Um, and then you have to pay dollar fifty after that. They reduced in their first year, this is the town of Rome, they have 350 residents and 156 sticker, uh, permits. Um, they dropped 31 tons of trash. And that's because they're surrounded by page of communities. So if you had a neighbor or a friend or a child or a parent who lived in, lived in Heath or Charlemont, or Buckland or Shelburne, um, bring your trash to me because it's free and well. And so there's no, there's not, there's no malintent. People are well-meaning. They want to help their friends and neighbors. So they, so Roe was seeing um, basically 31 tons of non-resident trash a year, and that disappeared once they Irving switched just last year in August of 2021, um, and they were seeing it extreme volumes of trash. Their, their trash tonnage, because I tracked their tonnage, their trash tonnage had gone from uh, like seven tons a week to over 10, sometimes 12 tons. And I kept saying, this has to be coming from non-residents. It has to be coming from their curbside program. So it's, it's easy for residents to take their friends and neighbors trash, but it's also easy for somebody to just drive through town at 11 o'clock at night and drop their bag um, at someone's driveway. Um, they have resisted this program for many, many years. Um, and we finally worked with them to, to do basically a pilot to try it. They decided to give every household two free bags a week. And if, if that's not enough, you can go and get another set of stickers and have up to three free bags a week before you have to pay. But just that sense of accountability, just people realizing like, oh, I only have this many stickers and then I have to go ask for more. The town of Irving, I just did these numbers again today, they reduced, they dropped 125 tons of trash to 34% of their trash disappeared. It went from 40 tons a month to, yeah, they were doing, they were doing like 40 to 45 tons a month to 22 tons a month. Like that, like from, from August when but, the program but, was in. But if that, really July, was, if that really was out of town residents, then you should have seen those numbers increase by by that amount in the neighboring towns. Yeah, and that's something I haven't done. That that's a, that's the piece that I haven't done is to go look to look at like oh what's what I mean Montague is three dollars back, Gill is three dollars back. So if you live in either of those towns and your parent friend high school classmate lives in Irving, why would you pay three dollars a bag when it's free? So I haven't done that. I haven't gone through and looked at what those increases have been, but I can certainly do that. Um, because there really is no explanation. I mean, 125 tons of trash doesn't disappear. Um, 12 tons, 13 tons of trash doesn't just disappear in one month. Unless suddenly people are saying, uh-oh, I don't have enough stickers to go around. Um, and it's not, you're not penalizing residents. Um, it really is just holding them accountable because uh, the other thing I, I mentioned is the, the people who are paying. So, you know, trash is not a, um, it's not like a progressive fee where, where pay as you grow is the more trash you make, the more you pay. But when it's in the tax base, the more valuable your house is, the more you're paying to support the transfer station, right? It's all based on property tax. So if you're, if you're a senior citizen, you're elderly, you have a modest home and you make one bag of trash with 16 kitchen uh, size uh, garbage bag a week. You're literally, your taxes are subsidizing all of the people who are taking in their friends and their neighbors trash or their friends and their, their out of town neighbors trash. The flip side of that though, is that the wealthiest among us are also subsidizing everybody else. And, and, and the uh, largest landowners among us are also subject. And, and if you were designing fairness in taxation, that's how you would design it. 
Exactly right. But then we don't know the person with the most expensive house or the top 10 most expensive houses may not be here year round. And so they may be only making trash three months out of the year, or five months out of the year, right? So so this this idea of a modified program to me is a really nice transition from bring in, you can bring in 20 bags. And you know, I'm sure, I'm sure these guys see how many bags people bring in, but bring in as many bags as you want to holding people accountable. We can really Conway taxes pay for Conway trash. They don't pay for any, they don't pay for Deerfield trash. They don't pay for ash. Ashfield is pay as you throw. Um, Deerfield is pay as you throw. Uh, Sunderland residents have to pay exorbitant prices to hire private haulers. Um, Waitley's pay as you throw. I mean, I don't know who else is who's here. Shelburne is pay as you throw. Um, you folks are literally the only Williamsburg. town. Williamsburg is not in the district and they don't have pay as you throw. Um, but so you're literally the only town in Franklin County that does not have some form of a, of a bag program. Oh, absolutely. And this is kind of sort of your view. If, me. if yes. in, in this scenario, if people are paying as they throw, would it not promote more consciousness toward recycling? Because I think a lot of people are just, oh, I just don't feel like breaking this down and throwing it in their garbage bags and dumping it when. 25-30% of what they're throwing away in their big green trash bags is actually plastic or glass or cardboard. Mm -hmm. And I think they would be a little more conscious about separating that out. And that alone would help reduce the punch. Right. But we throw but how much of a cost saving is that when we're paying to get rid of a lot of recycling too? Well, they, yeah. So here's so here's what I've seen because I because I've helped a number of towns go through this process. It's not a one for one. So if you save 10 tons of trash, you don't make 10 tons of recycling. It's typically half or less. So you save 10 tons of trash, maybe you make three to five, you increase three to five part of recycling. And that's because recycling doesn't cost anything at any other transfer station. So someone from Ashfield field can recycle in Ashfield for free. You can recycle in Deerfield for free, but you have to buy a permit. Yeah. So it's really a trash issue. What you're, what I, I am confident, ninety eight percent confident, you're seeing trash from non residents, just trash. So, so some Conway residents will say, "Uh oh, I only have two stickers, whatever you own, one sticker, one one free bag a week. I'm going to pay more attention. I'm going to take out all of my bottles and cans. I'm going to start recycling. Um, recyclables can be twenty five to thirty percent of your trash." More people are going to start using the compost program because composting is another 25 to 30 percent of your trash. So, people, when we rolled this out in Northfield, Northfield just went to a straight page and throw every single bag you have to buy. There's no free bags. Um, they, I, I talked to people who came to the meeting and you know yelled at me and this is the worst thing they should ever do. And then this one woman, I'll never forget, she called me later, you know, like three months. She said, I can't believe how much I recycle. I used to make four bags of trash, and now I make like one or two. Um, and that's what we heard from people in Irving was they were completely against it. They didn't want it. And then once the program, once they they had a choice, I can use up all my stickers in the first three months, or I can really pay attention. They did, and people started giving feedback like, "Oh, this isn't so bad," or "I can really do this," or "It's a game now." You know, how many how how many bags of trash can we make? less fewer bags so yeah, I, i'm not expecting any decisions or we well, can, we can just so that you know brownie has been steady lobbies me about this constantly she's um, not surprised and and <laughs> um and advocates for the stickers in the bag and and i've been really resistant to that. i don't think I, I i think i haven't like let you put it on the agenda even for us to vote on um and the, and that's just Personally, I just don't like getting nickel and dimed everywhere I go about everything. And that's just the, like, I just want to be able to go to the transfer station and not have someone come up to me and say, you know, this, that, or the other thing. And just, I, I guarantee you never have more than two bags. So. 
Yeah, and that's right. the, the beauty <laughs> of this that's getting these stickers. <laughs> so and I got a high maintenance dog that bites everybody if they don't get the exact proper biscuit. Well, then you're okay with people throwing trash in plastics. And you're okay with them throwing trash in the cardboard recycling. No, I'm not. I'm because, because, I'm, because when you just let them throw whatever they want, whatever they want. Huh? Is that what you're saying that he was responsible to adopt and just throw stuff away? No, no, no. no. He said he doesn't want to pay. You know, after that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to pay for individual bags. You right. So you it's not you know, I want somebody to stand in and tell me what I can throw. And, well, no, I mean, I you always go to the recite. No, I, know, I don't, sorry. don't mean it to that extent, but um, just that, 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 that there's this element to it that, that um, <clears throat> you know, that, that Oh, I'm not, you know, you're, you're, it's people are paying taxes or fees to government, and it's it, it's just less intrusive to just pay it through your property taxes than to pay it, um, you know, to go down to town hall, estimate the number of bags you're going to need, estimate the number of, you know, and then we're, we're going to be talking about the bulky stuff, fees as well, and the possible initiation of fees for bulk stores. The bulk waste, which is a whole, you know, right. go, go down, report what you're going to throw, you know, estimate right. the fees, all that, and, right. um, and you know, th there, there's an element to all that that is just like, you know, government get out of my. And I and I completely agree with you, and I understand if every resident in Conway was only bringing Conway trash, then your property taxes would truly only be paid for what was generated by your residents. I cannot emphasize enough, 98% positive that some volume, 50 tons, 80 tons, 100 tons of trash comes from your neighboring communities. And so- There's people that, that, that from neighboring towns that have purchased stickers that, that online, that gained our online purchase system. <laughs> so that, and, and right. I witnessed this. Because and, in their community, there's accountability. They're required to pay, it's not free. And so my only suggestion is you create a system where you where you start limiting the volume that's not being paid for by Conway. That Conway residents are paying for trash and bulky waste for people from people from Ashfield, Airfield, Sunderland, Shelburne, from anywhere within your region. What, what do I do as a transfer station attendant when I know somebody doesn't live in town but they have a sticker to go and purchase? Yeah. Uh, what, what do I do about that? According to me. And and or they, they pull up with a, a pickup truck or a SUV and they open it up and they start pulling all this building stuff out or all this okay. other stuff. We're going to get to that. But you know he's a contractor. And, and, yeah. Yeah. and it's yeah. not just a common way job. He's been, he's been paid. <laughs> so, to, to you put paid. That, I, I would like to point out that the, the, this, and that's what you mean by the modified, by giving some of the stickers, right? Yeah. So doing a straight piece of throw, making everybody pay for bags, I think we feel really intrusive too, especially in Conway. When I first got here, I was told by everybody, it's the only service we have left is free. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I keep biting my tongue and going, it's not free, pay for it in your taxes. Yeah. But I understand the, the concept. But the idea, if we could give every homeowner those stickers up, so they're they're already, they're getting that for free. Probably have the same argument when you had to put a sticker on a vehicle, right? Oh, that that was absolutely brutal. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I mean, we went here we are again. Yeah. So I mean, that, that's the way I see it. Also, is that one? It's kind of crazy. Anybody would have a sticker that's not a resident of this town. Mm -hmm. And two, like I do believe that the more other towns are getting squeezed, the more our transfer station is going to see, and it will promote recycling. I I don't see anything wrong with it. And what would it be? An extra two bucks a year to pay for those hundred four stickers for each. Doesn't it? Maybe at most. Oh, you mean to add into our budget to pay for those? Yeah. No, no, not that, not our budget. The for for the sticker for the sticker. Well, no, you're going to get some for the, for the car stickers. So typically, what yeah, probably back. Right. So typically, what happens? Right. So typically, what happens is the town, if you choose to go this route, and you know you may want to ease people in with two stickers, like for the two or three stickers. So the town buys sheets. You can buy rolls. I just bought New Salem, just switched from bags to stickers. You can buy gold for 500, you can buy sheets. Typically, if you're mailing, if you're going to mail them out to each homeowner, each taxpayer, then you 
paper and sheets. And you send those out and everybody gets 104 free stickers. And then after that, they would, if they need more, if they need 150 a year, they would have to buy those. Um, you can see Irving, you know, so most communities charge between two and 250 a bag for a sticker. Um, Montague and, and uh, Gill are $3, which I think is excessive. Um, but Roe went to a buck fifty and Irving's fifty cents. So there's not really a penalty. It's it's more a sense of for Irving, you know, you can make a lot more trash with way of it makes. It there will be a fee to the there will be a cost to the town to make the stickers and mail those. There will be potentially if people need more than two bags a week, they'll they, they'll have to buy it. So they'll have to pay about fifty or six bucks for the more stickers. Um, the other thing that I let towns know is. If you mail out two stickers, 104 stickers per town, that's the universe of stickers. So if she only needs 100, she can give me her extra four. Or if she needs 50, she makes that 52, she can give her neighbor the other 52. There's no, there are no rules. That, so. Yeah, or they just, <laughs> they just, you know, in my community, so, I think it's a poker game for stickers. <laughs> right. I live in I live in uh, Vermont, and I never use. I get fifty three stickers. I never use all my trash stickers, so I just am still using plastic. Like I just will keep rolling them over. Um, my town has a program where you can turn in your excess stickers, and then they go to people who are families who have you know multiple children in diapers. Mm -hmm. Two bags is not really enough. So this isn't this isn't to penalize people. It's really, it's really a way of holding people accountable, keeping the taxpayers' money paying for Conway-generated trash, um, and allowing you know the system where there's a universe of stickers out there, and people might never have to buy stickers. We left they, Greenfield. We were paying a dollar fifty for a small trash bag, or three dollars for big, and then they transferred the stickers, which was still. Dollar fifty for a small sticker, three dollars for a big sticker. <clears throat> that way, if you only generate one small bag a month or a week, you're covered. Right. Then you also have to buy a sticker for your vehicle. Right. So right. if you went to the dump, you right. have a guy at shed that would walk around your truck and give you a price to get rid of it. Right. right. Unless they were bags that had stickers on, right. so like mattress right. and, and right. whatever. And that's how most and that's how most town transfer stations work. I mean, you, you folks are just kind of like the island of. Um, Sunday, I had a woman told me. And, 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 and every, no, no, it's like, you know, people don't, people get very, I've said this before, you know, you could, don't take people's trash. Like, trash has some meaning to people beyond their, their kids, their dogs, their former spouse, whatever, their best friend. If you mess with their trash, it's, really insulting and it's like people get irate and i don't really it's understand true. psychologically what it is but there's something to that though i've seen it couples couples argue more at the transfer station than almost anywhere else yeah it is. and you know yeah. well, it's, it's, and, and it's i've seen it with that a half day that i was there i, I, I was amazed at yeah. the conflicts so, that were so, breaking out so, so, so i can people really because really, really, I, I also say i can talk about trash all night so um not to get hung up on this consider it yourself you know talk to people however you want to further consider it look at the look at your tonnage numbers um you know do does, you want to does anybody else mail, mail out the sticker for the car just one per resident as well i think ro um sends uh you know Ro, you have to buy it's also like a ten dollar fee you have to i don't know if we help. do that without sending it to people who are not necessarily here that often it might give them away well that's what we're talking about doing with the bag stickers anyway so yeah but then you had to go to the town hall and buy them or buy them at the well that's the sticker but we're we're i'm sorry that's the permit this the, the permit, permit to get in and the permit. bag that was green too. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand that, but we're talking about giving up so we could come up with some other system to get them to the people. How I don't do you, know what how do you get the permits to people now? They, they have to they have to buy come in and buy them. So actually that's the way to do it, right? When you come and buy your stickers, you get your free bag yeah. stickers. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Nice. I want to have a little trash. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's <laughs> so let's move on. So 
So can, uh, can, I thing say, I'll say, can I just say one thing? Um, so I'm wondering if you can't prevent people from out of town buying stickers for their car, how do you prevent them from out of town buying stickers for their trash? Well, it's not so much an issue if they're buying a sticker. The issue right now is it's free. So if they have to buy a sticker for $1.50 or two bucks, it's probably the same price or maybe it's 50 cents less, but that $1.50 is covering a portion of the disposal of that trash bag. I, I get what Jan's saying. She's no, saying I think if, they, if they order the $10 sticker and right. then they get that. Oh, is that more free? But Jan, if I, if I remember correctly, I don't know that that's happened that often. Um, Troy and Tim can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it was just a couple of times that there was a glitch in our online system that allowed somebody to go in there. And I thought we solved that problem this year. I could be wrong, but I know we talked about it. Well, the uh, system doesn't prevent somebody from buying a sticker. It's, it's the person who hands the sticker. That person needs to be responsible for verifying the request, whether they have an address list in front of them or they know that person lives in Conway or they can present some proof of residency. The online system does not oh, provide security. And the thing is, provides a space for you to enter your residential address. And the thing is, Jan, when I so I I, I was I, I was I filled in for for a day there and uh, as a transfer station attendant, and that I thought that that requirement was really unfair to the attendants, especially when that place stacks up ten cars waiting in line, and the. the um, but we can, like no nobody was yelling at you to move the line or anything like that. But you felt the pressure to do that, and 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 plus, um, you, you felt that that just wasn't fair. That that thing, you know, d depended on you, you know, on, on you to be the enforcer. Like right, that, I understand that, that, but I just wanted you to be be clear that the online system does not provide that for you. Yeah. Okay. I so She's I think I think no, online. I think. I think what we need to do, sorry, you're kind of breaking up a little there. Um, I think what we need to do is have that conversation between us about our internal procedures, how we're going to keep that from happening. Um, you know, because I don't want I don't want to take up all of your Jan's time with stuff that we can hash around for a couple of hours about how to make that work. Right? I mean, one one of the suggestions that we had talked about though is to that that all any purchases. Can have have to be made at town hall or town office, and that because that and, and that that would be the appropriate place for for people to show the proper identification, and and not gum up the works by doing it at the transfer station. So if they come in on a Sunday or a Saturday, they they want to throw stuff away. We got to say no. You go to the town hall and you wait till Monday until they open. That's I think that's kind of we should out. have. Uh, yeah, that's going to be. That's problem. not going to happen. It's going to work. We got people already threatening now to take their trash and throw it in the woods because for some reason they know town. about the mattresses coming. Yeah. And, and so anecdotally, I, I've heard that that's what all the towns that go to a per bag sticker, all the towns anecdotally um, experience no. greater roadside litter. It's, it's actually just the opposite. Yeah. Really? We, yeah. we surveyed every single town oh, quite a number of years ago now, but when they went to pay as you throw, we surveyed the highway guys and said, are you finding more trash? And they're like, nope. There's always there's always illegal dumping. It always happens in the same places, and it's it's the people who don't want to pay the ten dollars who want to go into the transfer station now, right? So so the majority of residents are going to are are going to do the right thing. You know, they're not going to suddenly say, I don't want two free bags of trash. Oh, I'm going to take my trash and throw it in the stream. Most people are not going to do that. They're going to bluff. I have people come into Hazardous Waste Day, and they're like. I'm going to take this home and throw it down the street. I'm like, okay, well, that's on you. If that's, you feel like that's what you want to live with, go for it. And they're like, no, I'm not. So, you know, <laughs> I won't do that. Okay, great. So, again, people, people don't like change. They don't like their trash to change. And so I think what we would have to do, and maybe it's a, a meeting with the attendants, not necessarily here, because they have a lot of experience and they see stuff every day where we can look at issues and say, okay, how do we solve that? How do we solve the person coming in without a permit wanting to go? Mm -hmm. They get what? They get something. They get a card. They get something. We take their name. We take a picture of their license. We, you know, we have cell phones, right? We take a picture of this. We take a picture of the registration. Um, we have very follow-up on everything. We take it once. They come back in again with the same thing. Sorry, mm -hmm. we already recorded that you've been, you know, so there, so there are mechanisms, again, to hold people accountable and make it so 
the attendants are not having to be the police because that's what happens. Um, and people don't get angry, you know, they get angry at them. So, um, and I'm happy to come back and we can talk about this more. We can talk about it in the, you know, like I said, in like a, a, in a different meeting setting. Um, you wanted to talk about bulky waste, and I know this is an issue. It's it's a very similar thing. You're paying a hundred, almost hundred and ten dollars a ton for bulky items. The only thing mattresses are now thirty five dollars. Um, pretty soon, clean mattresses will not be able to go into bulky waste, and we'll do a training. I'll do a training for the attendants about what can go in bulky and what will have to go to Deerfield. Um, that's a it's kind of a nightmare. Um, but I did the same thing. I looked at you know Conway. 100 and, and uh, what, 160, 70 permits fewer than Deerfield, and you did 14 tons more. So you have fewer residents, per, fewer permits, and you did 14 tons of waste. Because same thing in Rowe, the same thing that happened in Row, bulky waste was free. They had people doing roofing jobs, yeah. coming in with a full roof of shingles. Um, they had people doing kitchen repairs, some in Rowe, some in Charlemont. They were like, we know that job was in Charlemont. We know that job was in Duke. And so, again, it's holding people accountable. Your residents are paying taxes for this service. Contractors get paid. Builders get paid. Part of their job is should include disposal. Not, oh, I can get rid of it free in Conway. No, I'm not going to rent a dumpster. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to rent a roll off. Um, and so, I suggest a mechanism, either you don't take construction debris or you just don't take, they know who the builders are, they know who the contractors are, your building permits require disposal in a, in a dumpster or to, they can bring it to the Greenfield Transfer Station. So again, you're, you're just, in, you're basically standing in with open arms and people are taking advantage of it. I have seen a dumpster fill in the half of the morning between pallets. Right. And I've said stuff, and, and it's like, no, oh, we can't. We can't offend this person. Right. So, Somebody you, so, you're, so your, business, right, your business is in town, and, and, you know, I think that, I think really what it is, is town starts out providing a service. And then other communities or the private sector, trash disposal for the private sector gets expensive. And so it's always with trash, it's the path of least resistance. Why would I drive to Greenfield and pay $125 a cubic yard if I can go to the concrete transfer station and dump it for free? Well, would you drive to Greenfield and pay $125 a yard? No, most people, we may, I don't know, most people are going to bring it to you for free. And so then you have a situation where your dumpster is filling up. And so then a legitimate resident who has whatever toilet, you know, they get there and they're like, oh, it's full of construction debris. Um, so, Again, it's really trying to narrow things and hold people accountable. And how do you, what policies and procedures do you do to put in place when people are going to have a lot of angry contractors because suddenly they have to do something differently? Um, but it's really transfer stations are mostly designed for residents. Mm -hmm. They're for residential use because whether it's a private business that's not a builder, there's Business is generating revenue, and just like they get rid of their old everything else, they should be they should be responsible for their own trash. That's my, that's my perspective. Are you able to give us some examples, maybe in an email, so we're not extending sure. this too long? About how some other towns around us are managing the bulk waste, sands, construction debris. Let's say I think we should just scrap construction debris, but how they might be paying for it, whether it's like a truckload or it's a weighted system yeah sure yeah no the orange is the i just tell you briefly orange is the only town that has a scale mm -hmm. everybody else is by the cubic yard so when you go to greenfield they look at your pickup truck and they're like okay that's two yards cubic yards and right. it's 250 yeah i think can you just make a note that when the construction debris does go in there and it rains it puts an extra two or three tons of water into that it's bone dry and now we're paying for water all because the construction of just soaking that up, right? And that's going to be a big expense right there. Not so or it's, it's probably stuff that's not good for you guys. Oh, yeah. when, when they're throwing stuff in and it's all mixed matched, yeah, and you right. can't fit anything more in it because yeah. we're not allowed to break it up to cut it up yeah, to organize it in there. And the dumpster goes out half full, yeah, because right. we can't put the off. So maybe this evening is just 
you know, I'll just kind of put, put it all out on the table and then, and, no, no, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of more details. And I think what you're hearing from these folks is the reality of what happens is, is the dumpster, your, your bulky waste fills up with construction. But, but you know, what we, we sort of, my understanding is we sort of know who the, who, who the who the big who, who the regular large yes. scale users are and, 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 it, and it's a handful of people and if we could ask that they break down some of their debris prior to bringing it it would take a lot less room mm -hmm. if there's a way that we can nicely say hey when you bring that 150 pallets could you break them down before you put them before you bring them right because it would but, take it would take mean, like, like, like you, you, you you're, you're talking about you know Changing policies for the whole town to and, and when, when it's a handful of frequent violators of the spirit of the place. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. I mean, 86 tons of trash, that 86 tons of bulky waste to me is more than four trips of power. I mean, that's a lot. No, I'm not that's that's not more, I'm, it's only one person. Right, but he's thinking it's only five. Yeah, so oh, no, it's no. It's, it's, it's more like five. It's more like 20. 25. Yeah, right. So there's a lot of a lot of people that do for eating and eating but those people I know are doing it for residents in town. And that's right. for, for a woman, an elderly woman whose shed fell down and she can't afford to have a construction company come and scoop it up. So they hire one of the guys, Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, Eddie. He comes in and he does it at a cheap price and he brings it to the dumpster. But it's a yeah. resident bringing a resident's trash. So that's. But I'll, he also stacks it in there. So I will say that most of our laws and regulations are based on just a few people. Right. Right. Every and month. the ones that you right. don't see. Yeah. And yeah. some of the signs and, and the regulations we have are yeah. typically based on a handful. It's the few murderers, it's the well, murders of the exactly. Yeah. Saturday, it's few. Saturday, I, right. I, I will say that the one thing about this, and I appreciate you coming in, is that this town, and one of the reasons I love this town, is because everybody is always talking about conservation. We just talked for nearly an hour about cutting down trees that we shouldn't cut down. And then you look at this metric, and it should be embarrassing to everybody in this town. That we have that yeah, much more waste per user than anybody else. The Deerfield is three times our size and population, and we tend to have more waste than that. And they have the less. State. They have less permits. That's how that. Right? Yeah, but they also have a nicer transfer station. They also have people that watch everything that goes in. Right. Right. But but they're not allowing commercial stuff. Yeah. yeah. So this is, again, it's just that you folks are acceptable. And so it's the path of least resistance. And you know, there's no there's not malintent. It's that it's free or it doesn't cost anything. So so people will choose this this option. And to, so to me, you know, to be to be responsible as a town and, and have residents become responsible, there I feel there really needs to be some kind of narrowing of, you know, like it's not a hot fudge Sunday with a cherry on top, it might just be you know, a scoop of vanilla ice cream or five scoops of vanilla ice cream. So it's just asking what the town wants to pay for. What does the tax base residents really want to pay for? And if you want to pay for your neighbors, trash, well, great. We don't have to change anything. Um, let me just keep going. So, so we talked about businesses. There was a question about collecting fees and, you know, you have a busy transfer station. Um, some transfer stations, the attendant takes cash, they take checks. Um, some towns are only checks so if there's a fee for something like electronics um or an, or a mattress they have to pay checks other towns and we can you know we can go into this more in detail in another time or i can forward it to Vernon. some towns like deerfield and northfield have an online system uh where you have to prepay like northfield the attendants don't handle any money so if you have an appliance um or like or a computer you have to pay online um, and I don't really, I think you get a receipt and then you bring that to the transfer station and you can bring your computer. So, so there's different models. Um, you know, my suggestion is setting prices. So if there's no construction to do, that's great. But like you set a price, like a capture this much, you know, toilets and sinks are this much. And so really the thing to help the attendants is to make, to make things as black and white as possible. And people will still find the gray, but so somebody can't say, come in and say, well, this isn't really a couch, it's really like half of a lust. 
you know, love seats should be half of what a couch is because it's not as big as, right? That's what people will do. So, so it's just a matter of coming up with policy and coming up with prices, deciding what you want to charge for. Um, mattresses, and, and, right, and having and having prices that are at, at least uh, negotiable as possible. What I want to end on is to say that your facility is really actually well run. It's neat. These folks do an amazing job. It's clean. Um, I mean, I've seen some horrendous transfer stations that are getting cleaned up, but you know, there's no litter. Um, it's very tidy. The sheds are completely organized. Um, it's really kept clean and well run. So, you know, despite despite these other issues that I just kind of brought up, I want to say that you know you have hardworking folks there who are really keeping it. How many others have something like the Conway Mall that we have? Uh, a lot of towns have. They have different versions. Um, in most places, it's it's not so clothing focused. Uh, Leverett has a clothing. You should take a trip to Leverett sometime. They have like four new sheds. They like a book place and a clothing place and a and a supply, you know, like household shed. They have kind of four new sheds. So most towns have more of a of a reuse shed where people will bring, you know, frames or um, you know, pots and pans or dishes or cups or that kind of right. Because the, the mall is mostly the last time I was there, there's a lot of clothing. The, the second half, the back half is all clothing in the front accessories in the front is yeah, yeah all of things. Things. we are putting in we just got the um a resident God bless them just made the base for we we have a shed that's going to be going up at some point. Which will be for donations. So it'll be a covered metal right. shed for donations, which will help a little bit with what goes on inside. But. Yeah. yeah. So so most yeah many towns have that, and you know it's um it takes an effort to keep it clean and keep, make sure you don't get stuff. Um, one of the biggest issues, not only in Conway, but people like to leave hazardous chemicals. They like to like drop off their chemicals there, and so we really want to discourage, we really want to discourage people from doing Ice that. Ice area. Um, we found a bunch in there this weekend. Oh, yeah. They hid under the. They'll, they'll, they'll do. Uh, yes. So you had, and they had to go through the gate to do it. Around. They don't know. Well, they don't know there's poison ivy. They don't know about the poison ivy in both sides of that gate. There is none. So let me end by saying, this is not like Jan comes and shows up and dumps two and a half pages of stuff and walks away, right? So. I'm here. If you want to go to a modified system, I'll help you with the stickers and the design and the implementation, and we'll do public presentations and you know everything. If you want to choose to change your your um, pricing list, then I can work with you on that. If you want to, you know, you want to know how other towns are doing things, you can do that. We can certainly always take um, tours of other facilities so you can see firsthand. I say, how does it look here? Um, you know your not every facility is full serve like Conway. Conway and Deerfield are really full serve where you take scrap metal and tires and propane. We take really the whole range of materials. Um, other towns you can find in and just take trash and recycling. And, you know, have a new shed for children. Trash, recycling, reuse shed. That's the extent of their time. Um, so the question for you folks at some point, Kumal, is, you know, is it good enough or can it be better? And if it can be better, how do you want to change? Do you want to change? You want to just change? You know, there's a, there's two different um, psychological theories. One is change it all so everybody's upset all at once, right? So change bulky waste and the trash all at once. And then other places, that's what Roe did. Roe's just like, you know what? We're done. We're done taking everybody's stuff. That's it. No more. Um, and other times they're like, okay, well, this year we'll do a modified program and then next year we'll do it all again. So they'll get them out of just a little bit every single year. Yes. So I mean, personally, I feel like, you know, if if you're gonna do it, you can just do it. Rip off the band and then people and then people get used to it. All right, then and they will get used before to it. you leave. It needs to be decided today because if I get a phone call again asking me to go and sit in the game, I'm not doing it. So, and when I said they they asked, well. Everybody else is starting to leave a key hidden. And Wait, I said, well, I can't do that. I'd like to speak to them. There's to have a waste management lock in your lock. There's, is there not a waste management They key? lost the key to that other lock. We had to cut it off. To their lock. When, when it, that okay. was, what, a month ago? A month and a half ago? 
Yeah, they lost it. They, they lost their key. They, yeah. they, they don't we, have a key. We don't have a key in the office. But well, yeah, I mean, it's, it proves too is that they don't that they don't have their what they did to get around the situation at all the transfer stages, waste management put their they have a lock and every other gate. So so the town lock goes in their lock, right? Like this. So right. the town can undo their lock and get in or waste management can then. So you're saying they lost the key to their lock. I gotta call it five o'clock in the and morning. Then, and then and then but then but they didn't see Kristen and tell me that they didn't have a key to your gate. I mean, they, well, they didn't have a they, key. They, after that, they still were able to get in. Now, every truck is supposed to have a set of keys for every dump they go into. Right. Last but, few weeks, the same guy shows up and he says, I don't have a key. And I told him. And when he called me again this morning and I called him back, and I says, you know, that's pretty funny. Maybe you should put me on the schedule. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> yeah, well, why don't we just do this? We'll, we'll find a place to put a spare key. And I says, I, I can't authorize that until I speak to the spare. Yeah. Ah, screw that. Don't worry about it. I'll go, to, I'll go to Jan and she'll take care of it. And I says, wait a minute. Jan doesn't own this property. <laughs> I don't. I'm not hiding. But I'm telling you, the way he sounded is well, you were the boss of that transition. In your mailbox. The all, I, all I can think of is that. And he was extremely so he heard it. The road is very busy with people walking their dogs and biking. So I, all I'm thinking of is someone's people are out there doing their thing and they can see the waste management guy pick up a rock and take out a key and open up the gate and they're going, ooh, free trash. Yeah, there's no way I would authorize that anyway. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's been with me for years. Why a lot. They lost the key. Lost the key. Like, I don't know. Hearing about it. Same year. Yeah. 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 They did move, the, you know, they had a driver on vacation. And this is one of the excuses yeah. they use. Yeah. Okay. Another okay. one today. It, it, it was okay the first couple that. of times, but it, it's got yeah. to yeah. every month of morning, my morning off, and, and they're calling at 5 36 in the morning and waking yeah. us up and then yeah. 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 calling the and calling the that's right. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. yeah. that's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. But well, when he got totally rude, I don't know if it's been it said that he was going to contact you. He would deal with it. That's why it became out of so I don't think anybody okay. listening is able to follow the six conversations. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so I will I will uh, call Chris and work again. Uh, I'm going to again say combination. Yeah, but then don't yeah. forget the combination. Yeah. They're still going to call us. To open yeah, it. so they can call yeah. somebody else. No, they really need to. There's a reason they can't. Which lock was ours? Was it the big heavy duty lock? Yeah. Yes. That, that was Tom Connors. Yeah, okay. that is ours. Then the other ones that lost the key, the other lock. Okay. Jeff cut it off so he could get in that morning and they never bothered to replace it. Okay. Yet they had a spare key to our lock that they lost. And the driver says, why don't you make a duplicate? And he kept getting the runner. Yeah, some, some of those keys are not uh, do not duplicate. So like, that makes sense. Right. It's called. We have to get a lot of them, but I, yeah. <clears throat> so I apologize. Five thirty in the morning is unacceptable. Once, never mind. Three times, and I will talk to Chris, and then I'll work with Ernie to we'll figure out how to get that get a new lock on. And I felt that if I didn't, it was then the council wouldn't be there right. for one and over. Right. Well, thank you for getting it's, it's not. It's the town. That's crazy. Are there any questions? I know. I know. I asked Ernie. I was like, I need an hour. We need some stuff. I stopped stop talking now, about. One thing that you didn't really talk about is the is uh, the wisdom of the fee structure for the bulky waste, in which right now there is none. Mm -hmm. Or there's there's some there's you didn't yeah, you think, some a few things, but and we have the ground. No, yeah, it's all right here. Yeah, like on it. And, right. and but you didn't yeah. like so because this, this is something that Ronnie has been asking for, and it's another thing that I was resistant. About um, you can't give away everything, though. We can't because the town's going to go broke. You still owe us twenty five bucks for matters. The difficulty. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I didn't want to bring it up. And, 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 I, no yeah. I just have to me. say, <laughs> having done this before, is you can give the set prices and that's fine, and you can get down to the granular, a love seats five and the couches ten or whatever it is. The really difficult part is when you have things that come in a, a couple of boards or what you know, and it's not it doesn't fit 
And we had talked at one point about making a literally a cubic yard box. And so that people had a visual to say, if it fits in the box, that's this much. Because we don't have a scale, we don't have, and, and, and there was a lot of issues at my former town where, you know, we'd eyeball it and we'd give them a price and then they argue with us. And you don't have much to stand on you when you eyeball it. Price. Right. <laughs> and it's very difficult. And I don't like the idea of putting our attendants in that position because I certainly didn't like it. <laughs> so, so that's just something to think about that we can talk yeah. about again yeah. later about how to do that. So most towns charge for just about everything that goes in. Uh, yeah. When we do our bulky waste, our clean sweep collections in the county, we charge for about every, I mean, cell phones are free and, you know, recyclable batteries are free, but um, we pay for everything else. And um, that's because there's a cost, right? You're paying $20,000 a year for that, just that one dumpster. And and if other non-residents are coming in because it's free, but if they're in Deerfield, they have to pay 10 bucks for that couch. It's the same idea. Um, I don't think you could do this here, but what Roe did was they actually, because there was a lot of fewer people, they actually had their attendance tracking. They just, they just have a sheet with numbers and they're like, oh, okay, permit number 300 brought in a toilet today. And then they would record that. Permit number 305 brought in two mattresses. And, but just that, eliminated because suddenly people were kind of like oh i can't come in with 17 toilets this year because somebody's going to notice right that they're not mine so that doesn't work when you have a thousand permits um but that kind of accountability makes people start going like oh uh oh um can't do this anymore and the cost structure is really how much do you want to be free and how much do you want to cover some of the costs i mean i have towns that are like our transfer station's not making enough money, you know? And and so Conway's a little bit at the other end. I mean, most towns are saying, how do we cover our costs? How do we cover our costs? Um, and so that would be a constructive for- And people have talked to me about this, that they, that they want town costs to be there as in a, a progressively taxed that, that, you know, and that pr property taxes are the most progressive form of taxation that we have. Right, but when it comes to trash, just because, you have a, a, a you know a highly valued house doesn't mean you're making 17 mattresses a year, right? So so there's no there's no correspondence between property value and trash. None. Because trash is like that's like saying oh, my electricity bill should be based on my property tax. Well it has nothing to do with use. Trash is all about use. When you use and, it, and you see, make it's it, actually you exactly like I, I know I know in Conway three of the very highest wage earner households um, that don't get stickers that that just that pay people to come and take their trash right they don't participate in our they, they don't go to adult and right. unless we right. assess it out of their property taxes then um then they have no responsibility for our transfer station at all and so to, to me it makes like for reasons like that it makes sense to put significant portion of the cost of the transfer station onto our property taxes so that the highest wage earners that those most able to afford it okay right. even though they're not using correct right but i think i think then like the other i think then the other side they're not using the washington but yeah like, why would i want so that it doesn't somebody? end up on their roadside but that's the only that's penalizing now i don't have kids yeah I mean, pay for the school, right? <laughs> Same thing. Because there's the things that the community needs to do to, with whether or not they, they use it or not, the community needs that service and needs to offer that service. Right. right. And I think I think the thing is, and I know very concerned to trash this um, more because of the different budget lines, is how much, um, you know, the, the idea of, the, of a fee structure is to offset the cost. But your fees... And I've said this for years, your fee, your bag fee or your fees are never going to pay for your cost. You can't, you can't charge enough to pay for the operations. You have labor, you have overhead, you have plowing, you have, you know, um, heat, you have whatever. Um, so you can't, I know, I, that was a bad choice. <laughs> so you, so you can't cover it. So the question is, how much do you want to cover? Because then it makes those taxes from the wealthiest people cover other things like your roads or your staff raises or right so 
you only have one pot of money. And the question is, of that pot of money, how much do you want to subsidize the transfer station? And, and it's not even how much do you want to subsidize the transfer station right now. I'm asking, how much do you want to subsidize your neighbors, your, your neighboring towns? Because that's really what's happened. And so you could find a way to, to not raise the bulky items, but just narrow who can use the transfer station and, and work on the track. Mm -hmm. so. So right. lots to think about. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, consider this conversation number one. Um, I like how Bob okay. Armstrong smiles through the whole meeting. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not as whacking anymore. Savvy. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, Bob. Bob's yeah. <laughs> always smiling. You're muted, Bob. You know, this has been a discussion for a while. Uh, I think this will make a great special town meeting. We can talk about it for an hour. You know, look at the data, get people to understand that we're, you know, subsidizing all the towns around us. I'm sure everybody knows the people who are sneaking stuff into the dump from their neighbors from in other towns. Yeah. Yeah, and I would just say I don't think anybody feels like it's sneaking because it's really just a friendly thing to do for your neighbors and family, right? Like. If it's your kid or your mother, trash has to go somewhere. Your mother lives it, in Ashfield. Why would you not take her trash when you bring your own? You bring it's it's easy to fool money. ourselves into thinking that it's free, right? You know, Conway somehow magically has figured out how to do it better than everybody else, and we charge this minuscule amount for our sticker car sticker and nothing for the per bag cost. We are really great. Yeah. Generous, the, you're Dominic, generous. Dominic, the, the attendees, would you, would be the, 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 the infield reporter, the yeah, infield reporter, so. reporter is asking for the names of the attendees. Is it okay to do the names? No. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to be on a tree if you meet on it. Everybody knows who you are. Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they need uh, they yeah, I don't see them. They have I don't get I don't care. I just throw but some thought in. Mr. Mr. Lorraine, who's here? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's not you nice. Your name. Don't forget me. You're working with one today. Yeah, but is he asking for the attendees at the meeting in whole? No, no, no. He wants to know if the attendees are the attendants that are at this meeting. Yes, yeah. Mr. Chairman. So it's Troy Lucier. So could I could I add just some food for thought? Okay. Sure. Hello. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Okay. I was just asking permission to speak. So I just wonder if anyone has considered the cost of the administration of this kind of process. You know, all the stickers and the bags, and um, often we, you know, put in new processes, and no one considers the cost of the administration. So uh, just I haven't really thought this through very far, but some, like I said, some food for thought. Um, you had a person down at the transfer station that was solely sort of the, I don't want to say policeman, but the administrator that, you know, charged the fees, looked at the residency, you know, they had a street list in front of them and verified things. I understand the attendants right now are quite busy. So maybe this kind of a person could help out versus putting the, the whole weight of it on the taxpayer or the resident. Isn't that something that the Board of Health had done in previous years? Somebody, when it was heavy sticker selling time, one of the members of the board. One year. It was well, we members, it was Board of Health members volunteering. Or, and that's just but, not fair. Yeah, and it was, and it was way too much for all the volunteers to cover every yeah. weekend. Yeah. It's just there are the volunteers. But if that, you had one, one person there who was sort of the receiver of the of the you know the the receipts and says yep you're on the resident list you're good go ahead you know don't or the only, the only problem with that is nobody stops half the people don't even stop they just fly right by the attendance there's a big stop sign you've seen that they don't pay attention they just right by it right to the, the cardboard or the plastic or the mall and yeah. we have to chase them so they, they don't want to but if there's but if there's no one there, it's easy to just drive right through. If you have someone there that you have to sort of a check-in station, you know. Somebody's always at that first station. 
either Jim or myself to reject. I disagree. Most of the time, we're in, we're not too far away. I know away. you're there working. I'm not. I'm not saying you're not there working. I know you are, but there's not always someone right there when I get out of my car to throw the trash in. But, you know, you're busy, whatever, running the 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 paper compactor or helping somebody with bulky waste or whatever. It's just just a thought. There's always, no matter what rules, there's always gray areas and things that are subject. That's a whole other thing. You know, business that, that takes their trash to the transfer station, the business is owned by out-of-towners, but every employee is a local resident and things like that. And it's just... Yeah, but if you had somebody yeah, yeah. Space, then they get to know those people and then they call them out. And if they need backup, they call for backup. <laughs> When I pull up to the transfer station, I want to throw my own bag. I don't want to make you guys have to, you know, come out and look at it or something. I mean, I. I but the not, great thing is that the great thing is when you get to that age where you really can't manage that anymore, they show up at, at your door and they do it for you. They will. Yeah. That's we not what I mean, Bob. What I, what I mean is that so you, you're coming in with a mattress. You know, and there's someone who says, who looks at your receipt, yep, you paid for that mattress, go on ahead. Or, you know, I know you're, you know, Bob Armstrong, you live on whatever street, I know you're a resident, go ahead. I don't mean you're checking your bag to make sure you bagged it properly and <laughs> throw it in the right place. It's it's more the receipts of and, and residency. Uh, somebody's going to have to be standing there at the, at the, compactor to make sure you have a sticker on that bag you're throwing in there mm -hmm. yeah that's going to be more work. like i said no matter how you look at it there's a cost of administration and how can you most effectively make that work and we're talking about the possibility of needing another person there just to be a dedicated checker of everything well mm -hmm. i think we're not going to go there yet but that's a really <laughs> good point you know, it's a very yeah, good point. we can't get enough right now to fill the ships <laughs> Well, you get a reduction of waste coming in. That's less. Yeah, but, but go ahead and try and check all those stickers and sell all those stickers and determine residency. You're already doing it. Something I was hoping Jana Mean would talk about is what other towns do about enforcement. Yeah, you know, do they have a policeman at the dump when it's open? Benny? <laughs> well, a police officer just walked in the meeting, so I think <laughs> Oh, hi, Jan. Oh, I thought you were gone. Just not talking. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. So, um, you know, I I think my my experience from other towns is it's a little, you know, the transition is a little bit rough, but after four weeks to six weeks, people start understanding the rule. It's like anything else, right? When you go to school the first time and you're like, oh, there are rules. Like, I have to ask permission to leave. So, we're not, it's not school, but, you know, people start understanding, oh, like, I can't, like, there may be somebody watching if my bag doesn't have a sticker on it. Um, and so, you know, if there's more enforcement or more attention um, in the first four to six weeks in any new program, then people start getting the sense of like, okay, there is, it's all about accountability, right? Oh, there is somebody like paying attention. Um, or there's somebody noticing that I just come in with, you know, tires. Um, and so, you know, how the town manages that, if there's an extra shift or there's an extra person or, you know, people volunteer um, or, the, or the solid waste district decides to, to help out. Um, that's kind of it. I don't, you know, with grow, it was really just about um, keeping track of what people were bringing in. And it's suddenly like that enforcement suddenly cut their bulky weight. I think they dropped 13 to 15 tons of bulky waste in a year because somebody was starting to pay attention. And right now, anything goes. So anything goes. Yeah. So I, I think as you, I guess what I'm saying is as programs roll out, it becomes the new norm. So there are no towns that actually staff a, a, a policeman at the no. dump? But yeah. We should. You may want to, you know, if, if you roll out this program, you start charging fees, you may want to have police presence. Can we just get done? For the first, <laughs> for the first, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
three weekends or something. So people people realize that it's serious, but we're not there yet. We're, we haven't even decided on a program. Thing. When I moved here, the, the stickers were a dollar. All my neighbors, when they would change cars. For life, Bill, would, for life. They would, they would scrape the sticker off and it would come off in two or three places and they would tape it with Scott's tape onto their car. And, and, and I'm like, that's people didn't want to have to pay another dollar when they change cars. And now you, no. yeah, yeah. But, but we got know, through that. The world is not progressing forward. Anyway, Bob, I promise not to help you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so I would say, you know, I'm I'm in my office five days a week, and uh, yeah. Troy and Veronique have my cell phone number seven days a week. Um, so if you have questions afterwards, I, I made a note about uh, examples of bulky waste, charging for bulky waste, or what towns take and how they how they enforce that. Um, and I'll deal with the key, but if you have other questions after tonight, you know, forward them to Veronique or feel free to email me and contact me. A couple weeks ago, we were supposed to have a flesh and ball stick up. Whatever happened to that? I never did. No. The other thing came out, but I don't know. Okay. I'm going to change it tomorrow. They may have some, if they're coming anyway, there may be some up at the school we could add to it. So just if, if it does happen, please let me know. Separate and do you need a tire count for the pickup? That all goes through Amy. We have them quite a few tires. We have a division of we have a division of staff responsibilities, and I let her handle all these separate mm -hmm. pickups. Yeah, so Troy, just let me know. Okay. Just let me know if we need a yeah, tire count. Well, well, if you get too many, just let me know so I can let Amy know. But they're usually picked up at the end of the season. Well, I know they've been here twice already. All right. Anyways, thank you so much. Right. Thank you, Jan. For a live and live track discussion about this. But thank you. It's a sensitive subject. The first annual trash of Palooza. Yeah, that's right. At the select board. All right. Well, take care. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, wait, I'll wait to hear from you. We'll do a follow up. Yeah, thank Kenny you. Kenny advertises us with his road jobs too. I'm kidding. I, I was his presence at the beginning. Are you here for me? Yeah, come and stop me now. Sure. Yeah. At least until Thursday. Unanticipated. Yes. The only thing that really surprised me about the clinician co-responder service agreement is that the town of Ashfield is going to Um. Yeah. The only thing I, I do need to point out is that Lori was the Lori. And I don't know if it's She's notarized. That was two. So now we have no, two. No, that's me. Some of you guys. What? The what? other agreement, the regulatory agreement, has to have three notarized copies. All right. So that's up to all. So you guys are going to have to Oh, you have oh no, I'm sorry. I'll speak to you more about that. And we have to avoid them. I'm going to, I still want to <laughs> wait until they do what they do so I can notarize what they do. Well, right, that's just going. Yeah. Oof. All right. You know, I've been here this long. It doesn't matter. Do it in whatever order you want. I'm I'm okay because I did just text the chat. So yes, yes. So. Yeah, it's fine. I mean. Is that good though? Although what I'm gonna CSO? do though. Okay. I'm just going to take a step next door and turn off. I didn't see them lock up that office. So I'll just go. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And we had no reading to a sense on this, right? Well, we sent it out. It might have been sent out, but it was no. It's not in the packet. It's not on the table. Oh, okay. My bad. But Here's you saw it yesterday. Yeah, I thought I thought I had sent it.
Okay. All right. Oh, okay. supposed to be notarized, so I don't think. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 So. Diversion program. Pre-arrest diversion program. Oh, right. I'm sorry. That's what, yes. Right. That's because it's unanticipated. <laughs> so, uh, so this came to me from the chief uh, a week or two ago, I guess. And then I spoke with chief, did you pronounce it Basio? Basio, so thank you, from Ashfield. Um, and we met just to discuss what the logistics, so I'm sure the chief who knows way more about it than I do can explain about the this is this is a program they actually started it between three towns Greenfield mine and here for I've run it for a while mm -hmm. um, it's a grant funded program so to get a clinician on call they they get they get called for some reason in the some kind of help um, rather than and we're at the road and the next second as well, or something like that, perhaps these people can get involved and help them get them the services they need rather than getting in the system. Um, money became available at the state level for other collaborative agencies. So Beth volunteered, God bless her, to head it up. And so we've got multiple towns that are sharing another CSO, another clinician, and um, no cost to the town at this point in time. It's good for one year. And the grant actually, because the big problem right now is finding officers because of the whole those reforms played into it as well. Everybody's going to help. So ideally, the clinician is available. 40 hours a week, but we need somebody to basically be there to bring them to a call if they need to get with those things. Is that that in Deerfield don't they ride along when they make well, that the is, That's exactly what it is. Um, but, you know, we're pretty strapped for manpower. Uh, when I actually just spoke with Christina recently and she agreed that now that her kids are gone back to school, starting next week, she would have at least one day a week she could work, and their hours are actually funded through the grant. The officer's hours are funded. And so it's no cost to the town to get the office. Okay. Right now, full rain is taking them on Mondays. Um, Tuesday is kind of being shared between different places. Wednesday and Thursday, that is. Battle and Friday, and I think it will come as it unfolds. So, but with the understanding that, you know, if I told Christina in days that she can do it, she can take her and be available to go and take her to another, another town if needed. But that's all I'm going to pay for. So, and liability. For that clinician is all taken care of. And this is what um, Chief Petoric has been talking about for a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. You know, this, this is, uh, they really like this program. The money, the money became available. So Beth volunteered to head it up, and I said, Can you go for it? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Sounds that's good. It's and so this is what the this is the trendy thing. For the time being, so the money dries up. Yeah. And we'll get absorbed by community. Yeah. You know, the state has a way to. They sure do. <laughs> they sure do. Well, it's interesting before they get, once they get in the system, they have to self work with the public defender's office that try to get them into services as opposed to going to jail, but they're already in the system. So you can. Stop that step yeah. and yeah. take some young person who made a bad thing. Any person, any any person. in distress, right? You keep that from 
going up on the house. So we need the select board's blessing, and if they are okay with it, then I'll sign out. Is it the select board's blessing? It's just the chair. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, because you were saying you're signing off on it too. So. You want to? Uh, yeah. Um, we make a motion that we vote to approve participation uh, in the clinician co responder service agreement. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two And uh, this is the agreement. We're in. Thank you. Certainly, if you can just make a copy, a sound copy, and we'll keep it on the line. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a better steering? Thanks. So, move to. Move to hire Louise Beckett as the oh, new assistant to the boards and committees. No, it's all right. Go ahead. I signed. Yeah, Beckett. but you have to vote. Oh. <laughs> and then she, then she yes, has no okay. rights. So, um, so let's. So we're a, we, I just signed the regulatory agreement between the Habitat for Humanity and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts on behalf of the town of Conway. Okay. And that is. And it was three copies. <laughs> uh, Three. Yes. Okay. yes. And where are they? I just gave them. Um, they're on the table. Oh, but so was that a, a motion and a vote? To... We did vote. I was announcing the motion was we put them back there. How did I miss that? You were out of the. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you I step thought... out for one second. I know. <laughs> I, I missed all the excitement. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So make a motion that uh, that what I just signed that I did so on behalf of the town and that we agreed to sign that regulatory. Mm -hmm. Second that motion. All in favor? Right. Well, you, you just signed them today, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, we just now. Yeah. So, so uh, with the motion to hire Louise Beckett as the new assistant to the boards and committees. Second that motion. So, yes, and this is under 20 hours a week, and it's under $20 an hour. Yes, and it's about between two and three. Two to five hours a week. Two to five hours per week. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, it's seconded all in favor. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Um, motion to approve the Festival of the Hills, their use of the ball field, the town hall, the town commons, and our town roads for the road race. I should um, point out that there will be a contract. Um, at the next meeting, I just didn't have it ready yet, but I feel at least if you voted to approve that they were actually, we should table this vote then because we don't okay. want to approve it and then have an issue with the contract that would be two completely okay. votes. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. We'll take a look. But, yeah. I know it's always an issue every year where there are. These officers individually wish to donate their time, and the ambulance workers individually wish to donate their time. That. It's a to the select we were at the same website meeting. Yes. The only one I had. We had a bunch of meetings in the past couple of weeks. Thank you. 
depends on the screen. Uh, town administrator, I think I saw what you sent out. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that? No. Uh, select board member comments, concerns. Mail, nothing that we wish to discuss. <laughs> um, uh, announcements the next meeting will be the 12th of September, 6 p.m. here. And uh, with that, I'll we'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Stand adjourned.